das denn herunter? Einfach auch runter? <laughs> okay, well, hello. Um, we want to uh, present our paper, a new GIS or, or GIS toolbox integrating massive heterogeneous GIS data for land use analysis. And first of all, I uh, want to give you a short overview. Um, I will present the scientific background and our research objective and all used input data. After that, I will um, show the conceptual approach of our GIS toolbox with its general processing workflow and the used software products and uh, the requirements for vector processing. And after that, my colleague Birgit Lackner will um, present uh, the results of the GIS toolbox, the vector processing, um, then the um, core of our GIS toolbox with spatial overlay, um, the raster data processing, uh, the additional data, and in the end she will evaluate our um, toolbox and show some pros and cons of used uh, software products. Okay, um, both of us are working at the Chin Institute of Rural Studies at Brunswick, Germany. Um, the research area is the use of resources and environmental and natural protection. And in particular, we analyze uh, land use change in agricultural areas of Germany, focusing on environmental impacts and effects of legal regulation. Um, you can see three project examples. The first one is the current uh, project. and. Uh, the presented GIS toolbox um, can be seen as a result of all these three projects. Yeah, um, the research objective or our research objective was uh, to uh, develop a GIS toolbox um, enabling the processing and analysis of massive heterogeneous uh, GIS data for statistical analysis and therefore um, the toolbox subsumes all necessary processing steps for data preparation and for integration of all input data sets into one combined data set. Um, the data or there are some conceptual considerations. First we um, decided to choose a vector polygon approach as the main database. Um, we, we defined uh, some necessary processing steps and in the end um, we, uh, yeah, there are reviling requirements when it comes to software uh, selection and for example the software has to fit in our existing infrastructure. Um, the efficiency um, of the software products has to be considered and uh, interfaces has to be minimized. And in this, that context, it was very important to evaluate some open source software. Um, on this slide, I want to show um, all uh, used input data. And as you can see, there are uh, different formats of the data. Most data is in a vector format, but there's also raster format available or data in Excel charts. Um, the extent of the data can be it can be nationwide extent or only available for some uh, of the federal lender. And there are different sources uh, due to the federal system. As you can see, um, there is data for analysis of land use or natural environment, special conditions, and other data. Um, the IICS, uh, Integrated Administration and Control System, is a very detailed data um, on field scale um, in a vector format. And it combines GIS data with land use and land use related information. But it's only available for areas for which subsidies have been paid. And outside the setting, we uh, got the digital basic landscape model for Germany. Um, on the slide, um, you can see the processing workflow and the used software products. Because of the, the different data models, um, 
the processing um, yeah there are two parts like the vector processing and the raster data processing um, at the moment the data is stored in a PostgreSQL database with a PostGIS extension um, as um, because main data or most of the data is uh, available as vector data we use a spatial overlay of all vector data at uh, the main database the raster data processing is done in GRASS and after all this uh, processing is finished, we link the vector data to the raster data. And um, as you can see, yeah, oh my God. the additional data down here, OK, that's not good. <laughs> OK, <laughs> the additional data, um, like uh, the situation of biogas plants in Germany is um, integrated into the database after georeferencing and uh, these all the results of all data processing we use uh, for our statistical analysis in SAS. Um, as already mentioned, we use a spatial overlay um, of all vector data as the main data format, uh, as, the ma as the main database, and um, as a result we got area sums calculated for the geometries for our statistical analysis of land use change and therefore the data has to meet um, several requirements. The data sets um, must be complete within system boundaries. So the German, uh, the boundaries of Germany or of the federal land, um, there should be no larger overlappings. The uh, geometries should be valid. Um, and the uh, transformation of single polygons in multi polygons is also uh, integrated in our data preparation. Okay, now I will hand over. Mm -hmm. It's complicated. <laughs> Thank you. So um, now. Uh, no. Now I would go uh, like to go to the results um, of our GIS toolbox, and um, the first slide uh, is about um, the vector processing and um, the vector pre-processing. Um, the the first step uh, is the plausibility check. Um, we look at the data, their structure, the attribute data. I have a rough, rough uh, visual examination of the data for a general understanding. Um, then uh, we have to reproject um, the geometries uh, for homogenizing uh, of the coordinate system and uh, we repair uh, all uh, invalid uh, geometries and then we uh, check for overlappings uh, in our um, <coughs> input data and uh, we do this uh, with the self-intersection and um, depending on the data we have um, this step together with the elimination of the overlappings um, can be very time consuming um, at the end, we convert uh, all uh, geometries into single polygons. <laughs> said it uh, the wrong way, um, and um <laughs> and create a unique uh, uh, ID for um, identification after the overlay process. Um, this is a slide about uh, our um, routine regarding the overlapping uh, geometries. Um, you see some examples uh, for overlappings occurring in our data sets. Um, and we have several uh, criteria uh, for um, the classification of the overlappings um, for the um, uh, yeah for picking the instruments for the elimination. And uh, first is uh, uh, area <coughs> and shape, which could be a parameter for the identification of uh, sliver polygons. Um, the next is uh, the proportion uh, of the intersecting area uh, in relation to the um, original polygon area. Um, which enables us to identify duplicate or almost duplicates. Um, then we have uh, attribute data, which are relevant um, to uh, uh, for the, the understanding if um, overlappings are intended, as uh, in the case of uh, zonal structures of a, a water protection area, uh, or if they contain um, similar content and can be aggregated. 
Um, as instruments for the elimination, we have um, delete for dup uh, duplicates, uh, the clip uh, for uh, zonal structures or silver polygons, and we can union uh, geometries uh, uh, as we aggregate them. Um, in the latter case, we use an allocation table to uh, relate the new uh, geometries to the old ones. Um, this slide is about uh, our core process, the uh, vector overlay uh, operation. Um, you see as an example uh, two data sets, um, and what we want to do is to integrate them into one combined result, uh, where all um, outlines of the polygons uh, have to be um, preserved and um, the um, resulting geometries uh, uh, keep the information from the source polygons. Um, we do this mainly with the uh, overlay union function in Arcus, <coughs> um, and we control this with a um, Python script because we have to uh, cut our data into smaller chunks because we have uh, this massive uh, uh, input data. Um, and we have to adju uh, adjust our um, Python script um, for uh, every uh, federal land because of uh, the uh, uh, differing uh, input data for each land. Um, in the end, we import uh, the um, results into our PostgreSQL database uh, and uh, put all parts together and do an area calculation. And uh, this result we get back into uh, a text file for uh, SAS analysis. Um, here uh, is the our um, raster um, data processing. Um, together with the uh, the raster overlay process, um, since we used um, uh, PostGIS 1.5, there wasn't any raster uh, processing, um, and th therefore we decided to use a grass. Um, so we have to import all our data uh, in into grass and um, uh, calculate a, a slope and um, in exposition maps for the elevation model. Um, Yes, we try to uh, have a direct overlay of our vector uh, data uh, with the raster uh, data, but it uh, wasn't possible because uh, of the mass of data. Um, so uh, we decided to use a, a point raster as uh, the basis for um, the integration. And what we do is um, we uh, created a point raster of a 100 uh, meter resolution um, with PostGIS. And in PostGIS, we are doing an intersection of our vector overlay resolve. Um, and query all um, polygon information. And uh, in GRASS, uh, we do the same query for the raster values, and then we can um, join the data um, re um, based on the um, point IDs. Um, this is OK uh, for most uh, analysis questions, but uh, we also have the ISCS uh, data, which have a very high resolution. And um, together with the elevation model with a resolution of uh, 25 meters, we wanted a more precise approach. And um, therefore, we decided to use an alternative overlay operation. Um, and uh, because we could uh, reduce our vector data uh, to the ISCS vector data only, um, <coughs> we were able to do univariate statistics in GRASS and um, then we join the statistics again to the vector overlay result uh, based on the IDs of the uh, ISCS geometries. So um, this is uh, our, addition our additional data. We have, um, as Natasha already said, we have address data for biogas plants in Germany um, as an uh, Excel chart. And um, we wanted to integrate the location of um, the biogas plants into our database bec um, because um, biogas plants are um, regarded as um, a potential driver for agricultural land use change. And um, th uh, for the um, georeferencing, uh, we used the database uh, with uh, georeferenced uh, address data from the Federal Agency of Cartography and Geodesy in Germany. Um, and uh, after uh, uh, homogenizing formatting of our address strings, uh, we, were still, uh, we had still problems um, with uh, joining because uh, mainly because of this um, uh, field with the street address information. 
And as you can see, there are very, uh, uh, yeah, there is a combination of, of strings and numeric uh, uh, characters together with delimiters and uh, um, connectors. And uh, sometimes there are only numbers, or there is the street uh, uh, address inhabitant, or um, only placeholders like this uh, object without street and. Um, all information is not included in our uh, georeference database, and so uh, we were uh, mostly uh, only able to base our uh, georef georeferencing on the combination of location and postcode. And only for 35% of the um, biogas plants, we could uh, use the first uh, characters of this street address field, uh, too, as an additional information for Johnny. Um, in the end, we had uh, a cluster of matching point for each um, biogas plant address. And what we did, uh, we um, uh, took the center read of this cluster uh, for um, the, uh, yeah, the final point geometry. OK. Um, now I want to come to the discussion part of the presentation. Um, our research object was uh, to uh, handle this uh, um, heterogeneous mass of uh, geodata within an adequate time frame. And um, we have to say that uh, our approach is able to uh, derive uh, comprehensive uh, GIS uh, data sets for the statistical analysis. But we also have to state that uh, this uh, approach we are using is very time consuming. and. As regarding for uh, as uh, regarding the uh, data acquisition, the pre-processing <coughs> and uh, the processing part, um, so we have to think about changes in our toolbox, and we have a few options. Um, we think about uh, for future handling. Um, the first one, um, and the first one, we would use uh, the approach uh, we are using uh, now, and uh, using a fixed data set for a certain <coughs> date and uh, update only in very long cycles just to uh, minimize the effort. Um, the second uh, um, option would be a step back. You would only um, prepare the input data sets to the state that they are ready for the overlay operation. And the overlay itself would only be done uh, for small data sets uh, and uh, tailored for specific uh, research, que research questions. Or the third option would be uh, based on the uh, point uh, um, approach we are used for uh, the vector uh, raster overlay. And um, it would be very easy to add new data sets into our existing database then, but uh, we still have the drawback of uh, losing information. And in the end, I would like to um, evaluate uh, the open source software we, uh, we used from our point of view. And uh, in general, I, I will say that uh, the software we have used uh, was very capable of processing um, the mass of uh, geodata uh, within an acceptable uh, processing time. For us, acceptable means something between hours and several days. And uh, regarding PostgreSQL, um, uh, yeah, we think it's a very a great tool for uh, the data storage of this mass of data. Um, and each member of our team has access to every data set uh, they need um, without, to, uh, uh, without having to exchange them. Um, then also the um, table manipulation processes are very effective. And um, last but not least, it has PostGIS. Um, yeah, PostGIS is a very strong tool with many uh, geoprocessing routines. And uh, also the community is very uh, amazing. Um, we still have uh, found some uh, drawbacks in uh, PostJS for our um, uh, approach. Uh, and the main was uh, the high accurateness of some functions, uh, which uh, resulted in uh, geometrical artifacts or uh, topology exceptions. Yeah. Uh, Gross uh, has shown itself as a very efficient uh, in raster processing. Um, but for us, uh, the human expert uh, was uh, a drawback. And uh, also, we could say that um, if there are improvements in uh, usability or um, documentation, we think that um, <coughs> uh, 
the capabilities of, of grass could be better accessed. So on this, that, uh, oh no. Yeah, duh, sure, back. No. Yeah, and with this, I would like to finish our presentation. It would be o open for questions or discussion. Thank you. <laughs> so um, I have a quick, my question is very simple. I guess in the, in the process itself, uh, you're using uh, uh, ArcGIS. So I mean, my question is, um, ArcGIS has a lot of uh, rasa management functionality, for example, slope, aspect from gradient, etc. Yeah? Mm -hmm. But in this case, you're using grass. Was there any particular reason why you're using grass instead of ArcGIS? Yeah, we, uh, we try to use uh, uh, ArcGIS too just to uh, minimize uh, the, the uh, number of software <laughs> we had to use. And, um, but uh, for our um, yeah, massive data, it wasn't uh, really working, I have to say. So Grass was the only solution for us. <laughs> yeah? I have, the opposite, I have the opposite question, which is why we're using ArcGIS for the unioning and intersection. Yeah, OK. We're, <laughs> we're using PostGIS, <laughs> <laughs> right? What? We're using PostGIS. Yes. So why not just do it right in there? Uh, yeah, we tried. <laughs> well, it's not working for us. No. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, we uh, we de developed a um, PL um, PGS GL uh, routine um, for uh, doing the same thing as we do in ArcGIS. But uh, yeah, the problem we have it's uh, not um, able to uh, work with more than two data sets at one time, okay. which. Arcus is able to, to do, and also it's uh, much more slower, I <laughs> have to admit. Uh, so probably uh, yeah, with the topology, um, the new topology uh, at uh, ONS, uh, probably there will be changes in the future, but uh, I can only speak for, <laughs> for the current. <laughs> <laughs> well, you've been, you have given two options for the unioning. I was wondering how important SAS is to your workflow, and <laughs> could you not union it in something like R, which has very strong raster vector unioning hmm. support? Um, <laughs> um, yes, I don't know, because um, the, the statistical analysis is uh, not done uh, by the uh, people who, who do the GIS uh, uh, part and we have to uh, yeah to, to deliver a, a product uh, our colleagues are uh, <laughs> able to <laughs> um, to work with so uh, SIS is uh, the software uh, everyone uses at our institute so okay. All right.